Okay, and uh, let's get started. And uh, today I will talk about the BPF for Shadow Stack, which is uh, uh, try to use uh, a specific uh, method and uh, try to allocate the stack instead of using the default kernel stack. So uh, this is just a brief uh, description of the current uh, size and for different uh, kernel stacks. For example, for the x86, and the thread stack size will be like a 4K, and the ARM64 is a 64K, and the S390 is also 4K, uh, four, four page sizes. And the RQ size is 18, uh, the, uh, four pages, and also exception, uh, my stack size is two pages, and the BPF program, and uh, including the sub-program, et cetera, and uh, is uh, basically 512 bytes, plus some additional stack space uh, in JIT. And uh, for the small or medium size, or if you just have a single BPF program, this typically will be enough, and, uh, but, and, uh, uh, we have use cases and uh, so need a bigger stack size. And they, uh, for example, for chasing, and uh, you could have nested chasing. And uh, uh, we discussed, uh, they've discussed uh, uh, like a SCAD EXT, and uh, they could have a nested scheduler at different uh, C group levels. That's another use case. You have a multiple BPL program, or in the future, you may have bigger BPL program and the BPL libraries and uh, used with your program. So since it could be become complicated for the stack usage. So it will be a good idea actually try to uh, support uh, uh, alternative stacks and uh, in BPF programs. So uh, this diagram basically shows uh, uh, and uh, uh, for the scatter ex uh, EXT use case and you can have a BPF root scheduler and the root scheduler will call a K func, and the K func will call a node level BPF scheduler. And uh, for example, for Numa node, you can have several different uh, uh, CPUs. And at the CPU level, you have a scheduler, and after CPU, you may have uh, like uh, different services, and uh, which maybe like uh, uh, have say. Uh, one third of CPU for service one, one third of CPU for service two, etc. So you have a, a, another level of scheduler. And so this is the major use cases. And uh, uh, I did some prototype, and there are two different approaches, and I try to uh, implement uh, for shadow stack. And uh, basically, this shadow stack is nothing but uh, it just uh, uh, allocate the stack and uh, uh, not from the kernel stack, from uh, different sources. And uh, let's say uh, it is a black box right now, and you just allocate some stack, you get a frame pointer, and then and, uh, a frame pointer will be used for the third argument of uh, BPF program entry points. And uh, so uh, we have this BPF dispatcher function, and uh, which have a context, which has instruction, and have a, a basically the address of a BPF function, and we add one more called the frame pointer. And uh, after the BPF can finish, and you kind of like uh, free the stack. And uh, I, I will discuss more about what this allocate and free mean later. And uh, in the JIT, and basically you get the third argument, which is a frame pointer. You save it and uh, to the register 9, and uh, later, and the register 9 will be used and uh, try to replace the uh, frame point, basically uh, register 10, for the BPF register 10. And uh, beyond the BPF program run, and we have uh, certain programs which actually invoke the, uh, through the trampoline. So uh, we also need to, uh, like uh, for the trampoline, do the same thing for the BPF program run. You need to uh, like, uh, call the BPF shadow stack alloc, and then you need to uh, uh, populate the third argument, and uh, then uh, you call the BPL program, and uh, after that, you kind of like uh, doing free. Uh, this approach largely works, except it doesn't really uh, work for the telco and extension programs, because these two programs actually it is not invoked through the either trampoline or through the BPL program run. It is actually is called inside the BPL program itself. And so, 
allocate a stack for these two kind of programs and uh, probably will involve actually doing something in JIT. And uh, I did a prototype for this, it looks like it's complicated. So uh, I moved to the second approach, which is a JIT only approach. And uh, for the JIT only approach, and this is hack, like uh, just uh, uh, enable shadow stack, so the default kernel uh, stack depth will be zero. And uh, we will do the uh, emit uh, shadow stack alloc, basically it's a call of function, and which try to do the alloc. And then the alloc, the, the frame pointer returned actually will be saved in the, say the xd6 register nine, and uh, for each instruction, we check the source and the distance register. If it's a frame pointer, we just replace it with this register nine. Nothing fancy, it's, it's simple like that. And uh, at the end, and uh, before the exit, you kind of like uh, free your stack. So let's look at uh, how the uh, shadow stack alloc and the free are emitted in JIT. And uh, this is a prototype, and I, I'm pretty sure we can optimize that. And I just save and restore all the registers <laughs> necessary and based on the uh, uh, calling convention. And for example, here we save uh, register R1 to R5, and then we populate the uh, necessary parameters and uh, call the uh, kernel function shadow stack alloc. And I have two flavors, and uh, alloc and uh, uh, alloc are sleepable. They are a little bit different. And after that, and uh, uh, once you get the frame pointer and save into the register nine, and the register nine later on and will be used to replace the frame point. And the free is similar and basically opposite way of alloc. And uh, you kind of like uh, uh, get the frame pointer and then you have a program itself uh, as well. And you call the uh, stack free or stack free sleepable. And after that, and basically you do the restore. So the similar to the uh, uh, basically the approach one, and but everything is in JIT. And uh, for the non-sleepable, and uh, we could do something like uh, we define a per CPU page, and uh, the page aligned. Basically, you have in this particular example, I allocate uh, two pages, and uh, so alloc and free is just similar to the existing approach, right? And uh, you have a uh, allocated space like uh, two pages, and then you doing the c the calculation here a little bit complicated and uh, atomic operation just in case, and uh, the uh, two program try to allocate a space at the same time, because it's a per CPU, right? And uh, it, it could be interrupted or it could be uh, preempted, so. And uh, so basically here is, the approach here is you calculate the offset and uh, uh, remember the size. The size actually is, uh, can be calculated by program itself. This can be optimized. So you get the frame, you return. And uh, at the end, after the program run, and uh, you will be get a call the stack free and you adjust the offset as well. And. Uh, so for non-sleepable, there's a nice property that actually is nesting. Like you have a program A start, and then nested B and C, and then C and B and, and A and. So, you, so this approach actually should work for the uh, basically non-sleepable program. For sleepable program, it is a different story, and uh, you can have a, like a right a diagram, uh, the graph, like uh, you have a sleepable A, sleepable B, sleepable C, and then it could be sleepable A and first, like sleepable B and the second, and uh, followed by sleep program C. So in this particular case, the nesting doesn't really work, so I just use the uh, K-malloc approach. And the sleepable program is supposed to be in process context, so K-malloc and k free should be fine. Yeah, that's uh, two approaches. And uh, there's a lot of issues and not resolved. And I didn't basically do the performance evaluation yet, although all the self-tests are passing. And uh, it's it, it working fine. 
and uh, I pre per CPU stack size for the non sleepable program allocate two pages, maybe four pages, maybe dynamic allocate. So it's a different approaches. Yang and uh, also Yang potential Hung? overflow. Sorry, Yang Hung, can I can yeah. I ask you a question? Sure. So I, I think I'm a little bit confused. So what happens if, if you're doing this on the JIT path, what happens if you can't allocate the stack? Uh, you mean the JIT on one stack? Right. The on one stack is uh, uh, unchanged because we didn't really change the prelog and epilog of the JIT. And uh, so the SP register, uh, the, the uh, uh, basically the frame pointer is not really changed. And uh, we, we just, the BPL program currently use the uh, register 10, right? We just replaced it with another register, that's it. But we don't modify the R10. But how do you, but you need to allocate the stack, right? You're doing yes. that, but what do you do if you can't allocate it? Like you don't, you don't have a stack uh, to run on, right? That's the thing, right? And uh, for the uh, sleepable, uh, Use a K malloc. If there's no space, there's no space. Right? How do you how do you so recover from that? Will, yeah. How do, how do if you if there's no space, then what can I do? And uh, for the per CPU, uh, for the non-sleepable, we could do the allocation, but that's too expensive. So that's why we pre-allocate some per CPU pages. I see. Yeah. Have, wait, so is there? Have we considered just doing a pre-allocation, like for nproc? Stacks when the program is loaded I and just using we those could do that, and I think and if really stack is beyond, I think we can have a logic to do that, and uh, the thing is the complicated logic and uh, will prevent inlining currently, and uh, for the non sleepable program and I written a little bit thing it mostly some calculation plus some atomic operations yeah. which can be inlined. Yeah. If we have a I, really complex like reallocate, it cannot be inland yeah. anymore. Yeah, it's it's I think if, if we were to allocate it just at load time for every yeah. CPU, yeah. then it would yeah. it would really cut down a lot of complexity, a lot of error mm -hmm. cases that we would have to handle, right? Yeah. And is there uh, is like is yeah. there any argument against not doing that completely? I mean like without having the runtime allocation? Yeah, runtime allocation yeah, we can do runtime allocation, I mean, but it's just a little bit expensive. No, no I think you were saying do it load time allocation. allocation. Yeah, exactly, only yeah. at load time. Yeah, and if it fails, you fail to load the program, and you always I, I need to do to measurement stack, to right? see whether it's truly expensive or not. I haven't done that yet, but that's something but, I But it's not just about if it's expensive. It's also less complicated to just do it at load time, right? It's it's less complexity. There's less, less cases to have to handle. You know, like it's in SCEDX, for example, like there are sleepable paths that. Yeah. Um, this is a non sleepable path, and basically, you basically, and uh, this is the per CPU one, you get this uh, offset, and then you based on stack size, you return and uh, get the off, and you, you basically okay. return the frame pointer instead of a stack pointer. Gotcha. And, and the, the BPF shadow stack is allocated at load time? Yes. Wrong oh, okay, got it. This is runtime. And this code is executed in runtime, and it is actually the JIT. It's here. It is called the emit shadow. Hey, Yang Hong. <coughs> so, like, <coughs> I feel that doing runtime at the beginning, prolog and epilog, like doing anything, like inserting extra calls in there, this is like non starter. Yeah. Really, like this is way too much overhead. Yeah, like I, it I won't agree. be it yeah. won't be usable for majority of the programs. Only for programs that need to be explicitly opt in when they spend a lot of time inside yeah. the program doing yes. a bunch of work. Agree. Because like extra two calls per program in the vacation that's like way yeah. too big. Yeah. So what the David is proposing is to allocate up front at the load time and hard code all of this constant. So there is no calls at all at the beginning and end. And it's safe to do because for most of the program, except few, <coughs> we prevent recursion. So they never like recurse into, into themselves on the same CPU. So if per CPU memory is allocated up front per program and they never recurse, you can use it. The only <coughs> thing that this uh, shadow stack won't work for programs where we allow recursion. 
and those are like few and hopefully we don't need to yeah, do this. Yeah. Those are just tracing yeah. progs, I would think, right? Like no, they're not tracing the SCADEX progs. They're what, sorry? <laughs> they're networking, like okay, TCP, okay. TCP yeah. BPF yeah. stuff, where yeah. it has to record. Definitely. So that's why I mentioned, uh, you know, for some special, like an SDP or something, we have additional overhead, and we may want to add a flag. I don't know, but no, this is not wrong. BPL program load. During BPL program load, I maybe. Yeah, ideally it's all transparent. Like you shouldn't need like program to know about this at all, okay. and uh, program writers they should not be even aware that yeah, this is yeah, happening. Yeah, we, we do not do this, and we can implicitly in the kernel. Yep. I don't. Know. Yeah. Yeah. I I think ultimately is the overhead, as you mentioned and how, how expensive it is, and how we could optimize, make it uh, faster, so. <laughs> yeah, like, so I think like all of this, like guard page and everything, that shouldn't be there. Like, <clears throat> yeah. we should not need to have like, any kind of like guard page or stack overflow. Like if we, if the solution is somehow involves like guard pages and failing runtime allocation, then this is yeah. wrong path to follow. Like yes, currently, it doesn't yeah. exist. So, like yeah. this new stack shouldn't degrade uh, uh, experience. I think we can uh, basically, and uh, per CPU page, I think. And another option is basically per task, and uh, that one we could do that, and uh, basically in a task structure. I don't, add another pointer. I don't think that would work because on the scheduling path, we're moving, like we're scheduling other tasks. I mean, I guess like the task that's doing the scheduling operation could okay. do it, but like you're, you're on the fork path. Yeah. Like I, I think it's, I think it's going to be way less expensive just to do per CPU, right? Just allocate a stack per CPU. Doesn't matter how many tasks are on the system. You just mm -hmm. allocate the stack you need, and that's what you use, yeah. right? And just thinking out loud, could, like, could, could we even have like a, I don't know, global per CPU stack, even bigger than four pages? And then depending on, I mean, like, you, I you, you do have this recursion, right? Fun, and the per CPU is, uh, per CPU is just make it easy, and we have an atomic operation anyway. In that case, like what, okay. like let's not complicate it. Like, what's wrong with per CPU per program? You can have a megabyte per CPU per program. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. That's it. Like, no extra yeah. complexity. Don't yeah. do with any of the atomic stuff. I think we can have one meg, like uh, in user space. That will be perfect. And then we we just optimize. Basically, everything can be in JIT. Actually, yeah, if that's the case. And if and if you did per CPU, I don't think you need to do any atomics, right? You just use whatever your, the per CPU stack is, and nobody's going to mess with it. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a lot of benefits to doing it that way. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, I have a lot of follow-up to do. Any other comments, questions, or? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you.